Yeah, so I'm going to go into one more example here. Um, this is something that is commonly a problem that I like to solve when I'm working with games as well. And uh, SDL data structures, namely hash maps, uh, really help um, solve this problem for me. So you'll notice here that basically I am storing these textures uh, once in global memory and as global variables and then passing those textures to um, the game object classes that use them via set texture. And I don't actually free those uh, until I'm done with the entire game. Well, that's just kind of not optimal in my opinion. So what we're going to do here, uh, as if this video wasn't long enough already, is we're going to basically really quickly code up a, um, a texture cache class that will basically manage all of our textures for us. And we're going to call that texture manager. And it's basically going to be a class that helps us deal with the potentially very complex uh, memory management issue that, that arises when you're dealing with assets in games. Technically this is an asset manager, but since the only assets that we have in our game are textures, um, that'll be just fine. So I'm going to call this texture manager H, and I'm going to call this texture manager .cpp, and we are going to get started. So essentially what this will be is a class that has a default constructor that we're not even going to concern ourselves with, but basically methods that allow us to set textures for names. So basically Every texture will be, for, be deferred to, or uh, be referred to by a name, and of course its pointer will be its actual stored value. And we will retrieve them by their names as well. Every time we put a texture in here, the assumption is that, that texture will live until um, the class destructor is ran, in which case we will free all the memory for all the textures in the uh, manager. And I will show you how we implement this, but first I just want to put these methods in here. Really getting tired of that damn help menu, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you, when I set out to do this C YouTube series, I knew it was going to be like complicated, but I didn't know it was going to be this insane. Okay, so how would I implement something like this? Well, this is where we enter our friend the map, and namely the unordered map because it's implemented using a hash map. The standard unordered map is going to be your guys' unordered map. Introduction to a rather more complicated than a simple STL data structure. Um, having said that in a way that's not stupid, um, it is a data structure that takes two template arguments, not just one. Basically, we are going to map strings to STL texture pointers. We're going to call that textures. And essentially this works very easily because of operator overloading. It overloads the square bracket operator the same way STL vector did for indexing. And it's very simple. Basically, if you want to put something inside here, you just say textures, the key, which in this case is a string, and then the value, which in this case is, um, yeah, to SDL texture. If you want to return something from there, it's just as easy. Um, there's a lot more you can do into the STL map, but this is the most simplest way to use one with the syntax, and it's really nice. Um, the only case where you might not want to do this is this will return null if it's not found, um, which I guess in this case is okay. But uh, if you want to have a little bit more control over it, you might do something like textures.find by name. You can check that to see if it's equal to textures.end. The reason why you want to do this is this will not insert a null entry 
in the map if something isn't found. It's just a way to be a little bit nicer about it. However, textures.find is already doing a lookup and returning an iterator. And this essentially, because I like to be as efficient as possible, would then do the lookup again twice, which is not efficient. So if you're going to do find, you might as well take advantage of it and use the result um, as many times, you know, use the result instead of wasting it. So in this case, you would think I would use star IT, but believe it or not, IT returns something weird called a pair. So basically, instead, I believe you just do it.second, where first would be the key and second would be the name. If you don't care about anything um, as far as being this complicated, you can keep in mind that it really is not that big of a deal to just do this, which I showed you in the first place. But because I enjoy confusing you guys, I don't really, I'm sorry. Um, I want to do it properly, and this down here is the proper way to do something like this. So essentially we have just wrapped a map of string to textures inside something called Texture Manager. When it comes time, I don't think this is going to compile, so I just want to double check this. No member name second. I had a feeling this was arrow notation. It is. Okay. Cool story. So there's one last thing I'd like to do before we consider this class complete. We need to iterate over ourselves, and, and by ourselves I mean this map, and delete everything inside of here to clean up when the texture manager essentially goes down. That's pretty simple. We basically just do for auto, this will be a pair, I believe, the, for, you know, the thing that has first and second. So I'm just going to call this um, entry in textures, delete, entry second textures clear again that clear is not necessary but it just makes me feel warm inside to know that I'm doing it um, it's actually like not efficient at all there's really no reason for me to do this but it happens it happens automatically anyway at the very next line so that's a texture manager and let's go ahead and tie this video up by actually using this thing note that because I've encapsulated the use of this map inside texture manager I don't have to directly touch it I can just use the texture manager methods. So let's make one of these things. I'm going to make it global, which is bad practice, but I don't care. Texture manager, I'm going to start it out as an all pointer. And when we're ready, I'm going to create one of these things dynamically via new. So texture manager equals new texture manager. And then at the very end, delete Texture Manager. This should run, but we have actually haven't used anything yet. Shut up. I'm tired of making mistakes today. Okay. So how will we actually populate this? Well, we can just use our methods that we defined ourselves on the Texture Manager with respect to the plain text. Now there's one thing that enters my mind immediately before I do this. One of the reasons why it's convenient, in my opinion, to have a texture manager is to take all this loading crap and get it out of your main code. Um, what I'd like to do actually is have the, the file name essentially be the name of what we're looking for in the key. An easier way for me to explain that would be is if I were to take all this crap and put this inside get texture so that if the texture cannot be found, we actually try to load it and insert it immediately into our own texture manager on the fly. So that when we get a texture, we're really trying to get a file name. I'll explain. So we want to get a texture by its name. That name happens to be the file name, so we can just do this. Convert the C++ string to a C string. Load the surface. Make note of the texture that returns, which is essentially our value, which we're just going to say set texture. This for name. That was dumb. Hold on. Steal texture text equals this return text, which we can't do yet because we're supposed to free the surface first. Let's do all create like 
So we load the texture, we insert the texture into our own cache, name text. It's now forever uh, stored until the whole texture manager goes down inside of here. And we free the surface, which was temporary, and finally we return the text. And we only do all this if it wasn't already in there. Essentially what this accomplishes for us, and now you really should never do this stuff up here. Uh, essentially what this accomplishes for us now is that if I wanted to get the um, ball texture, it's as simple as me saying ball text equals texture manager get texture ball. And I can do the same thing for the plane. And I've taken all this ugly code and it's completely been removed out of here. And essentially now, if I didn't screw this completely up, which I did, Oh, jeez. I'm really glad that I uh, caught this. I, you can't delete an SDL texture. You have to SDL. You have to use the proper STL uh, destroy texture function. This is a C object, not a C++ object. So you have to use the associated method on it. That would have been really dumb. I have to include SDL image in here. I know that these examples are complicated, but I mean, like, I'm not going to do a YouTube tutorial series and not show you guys real world examples where most people are afraid to go into them. Um, it's just not something I'm interested in doing. I want to show you guys actually how to do this. Uh, it looks like we need the renderer to pull this off, um, which is kind of really annoying because I do not want to pass renderer in to get texture. So, um, Man, all right, fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the renderer be a static property that the texture manager needs. I don't know if I showed you guys how to do static um, static class data members yet, but uh, first time for everything. So the problem here is that I need renderer to create these textures, um, and renderer is an object that lives all the way up in main, and I need to find a way to get it to the texture manager, and I'd rather not pass it as an argument to get texture because that just kind of ruins the niceness of what I was doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare it static. And basically what that means is there will be one of these for all objects in the entire class. It's almost like a global but it's stuck inside texture manager. Um, and it's called SDL renderer, renderer. And basically the syntax for declaring one of these is declaring it static in the header file and you drop the static keyword in the texture manager, but you throw the scope resolution operator in front of it, like so. So you, this is essentially like telling it the prototype for the variable here, and then the actual definition of the variable here. And then basically I'm going to make a static function. Once again, you can call this without an object. It's once one function instance for all of uh, the texture manager objects that might exist. And this is basically going to be called set renderer. I didn't think I'd be teaching you guys about static methods here, but whatever. Once again, you drop the static keyword over in the CPP for no reason, because C++ wants you to. This is a static method, meaning that you, there's no this, there's no touching anything that's not static in here. Um, but you can change the static variables like so. And now renderer will be defined, however I have to set it. It's basically now this is something that must be done before you can use this class. So essentially I initialize the texture manager by giving it access to the renderer. Another solution uh, could have been to make it a argument to the constructor like this. Um, I'm okay to do it like this as well. It might have made more sense to make it a constructor argument, but you know, I got an opportunity to show you guys uh, what static methods look like, so I, I don't regret my decision. Finally, will this work? Yes, okay. 
So that was a lot of work for the same exact thing, but what's really cool about this is if I had a very, very complicated game engine, you could think of something along the lines of like Doom 5 or Doom 4 or something, and you were loading assets and all these different parts all over the program, what's cool is, is this ball dot ping does not load again. So like if I wanted to do this and and get texture ball dot ping down here, it's already loaded in RAM, so it won't um, it won't load it twice. So that's really efficient. Essentially it just pulls it from the cache. And if I wanted to add a function later to um, to delete one of these things, void drop texture, which basically would drop it from the cache by its name, or delete texture, erase texture, whatever you want to call it, um, what this basically would do was um, it would take the object that was in the cache and um, remove it from the cache so that I could selectively delete textures that I no longer want to be inside the texture manager in memory anymore. So it actually would be pretty simple. I basically would just say delete textures name and then I would erase it. Um, I think the easiest way to actually do this would be to do this. I'd grab an iterator to it. I would only do anything if I found it and then I would delete it second and then I would do textures dot erase your it and that would be a way to drop it if I wanted to do something like that. And I could have another method to erase all the textures if I really cared about doing that. So, um, I think this wins. I think we have a new winner for the most complicated YouTube video of the series. Probably one of the most complicated YouTube videos I've ever done. Um, yeah, so as a quick recap, this was data structures in C++. Um, I showed you guys an example of how to use an STL vector and a list to store game objects into an array, dynamically insert and remove from that. And I showed you guys how to use an STL unordered map as an implementation to map to implement a texture manager or a texture cache by mapping strings to texture pointers. Assuming um, you guys understood everything in this video, which might take you a couple tries and a lot of research, um, this is extremely powerful stuff and among some of the most cool stuff that you can do with C++. Because everything that we've done is very performant and very efficient. So I'm fried, though. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. This was a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. I, hopefully the next uh, video won't be as complicated.